We have so much to be proud of here in Chattanooga. One of the most recent things, I would say, is the opening of the Charles H. Coolidge Medal of Honor Heritage Center. Molly Randolph, lucky enough to be the curator of that wonderful uh, museum. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. And I'm getting quite the education, really, on what it is to be a curator. You came here, you're from Nashville, mm -hmm. you came here from um, a museum in Georgia, in Milledgeville and kind of perfected your craft. So what we're gonna talk about, Molly, that you're doing now at the Heritage Center is your complete creation. I mean, this is amazing, this new exhibit that you have. You conceptualized it mm -hmm. and brought it to life. I, I did, and it's been so much fun to tell the story of World War II soldiers and their experience as they traveled through Europe. So as a curator, I've always thought your job was to the intake mm -hmm. of, of all the items that are displayed. Is it that plus now the creative side that you're showing? Definitely. Um, so being a curator, it's a it's a very versatile job. Um, not only are you taking care of all the objects in your collection, and we have about 10,000 pieces at the Heritage Center, mm -hmm. um, but you also create exhibits. Um, you know, maybe help with public programming. Uh, so there's there's a lot going on. So, you know, in this year of COVID, I think all the parents out there have realized that their kids learn in different kinds of ways. But if you have a child who learns by experience, that would be my case, what a great opportunity to Definitely. come. It's one thing to read about history. It's something else to see the flap jacket, as we were just talking about mm -hmm. in person or what it would have been like in the foxhole. So this exhibit that you've set up just opened what, back in April? April 29th. Okay, runs through September. So you've got the summer to kind of get in there and do it. But this is about experiencing Europe specifically in World War II? Yes, specifically. Um, so it's about kind of the, the tourism experience and the kind of, I guess, weird dichotomy of being a soldier in a war zone, but also going through places like Paris right? and kind of those experiences that they had. Well, you know, I think that's fascinating because if you are old enough to know somebody who served in World War II or you heard stories about it, that was part of what changed America. We mm -hmm. had been a very small little country, then they head off to Europe and they see things they had never seen before and they brought those experiences back. It's so true. Um, and you know, throughout the exhibit we have a lot of souvenirs that soldiers brought back too. You know, charm bracelets from Paris, um, postcards, also, you know, um, things that they took from enemy combatants. So there's a lot of things that were brought back right. that helped shape um, the American consciousness about what that war was about and kind of America's place in the world going forward. So I was asking you if there are people who have you know, family members who proudly serve, but they have a lot of memorabilia that a family mm -hmm. doesn't know what to do with. Do they ever gift it to you? And if they did, could you possibly find a place for it in an exhibit down the road? Definitely. Uh, people donate items all the time. Um, you know, it's a really great way to help preserve your memories or your ancestors' memories. Mm -hmm. um, things kind of rotate on and off display, so not everything can be on display all the time sure. because we have about 10,000 pieces. Right. Um, and we're also actually hoping to build a, um, a better collections facility that would be an area of research. So even if a piece wasn't on display permanently, um, you know, someone could come in wanting to do research on a certain type of object and they could see it there. To be a historian, I think, requires a pretty good imagination. I think, because you have to picture yourself living in that time and, and fill in the holes, really, where the story doesn't quite get told. You have to kind of bring it to life. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I think it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I'm learning about people through what they left behind, and that's what we try to do with exhibits. So do you find, too, and I don't want to get political, but you mentioned learning about people from what they left behind, to remember that people were people Mm -hmm. at the time in which they lived and Definitely. to try to take whatever their story is and apply it to your life and what would you do? Is that the best way to learn? I, I mean, I think it's one of a, like you said, there are many different learning styles. Um, so I think that's a really powerful way to learn. And, um, you know, these exhibits, they teach us so much, mm -hmm. not only about the past, but about you know, how you can apply it to your present. And I think that's really the mission of the Heritage Center as a whole. So a great time to go, actually, if this is piquing your interest, and I hope it will, is to go down this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, because you have not just the exhibit, but a really special event taking place Definitely. this weekend. Definitely. We have a whole slew of events from Memorial Day weekend. 
We're going to have a Medal of Honor recipient, Captain Mike Rose uh, from the Vietnam era. He's going to be here on Saturday um, in particular. Um, he'll be helping to dedicate um, a some bricks we have um, that honor veterans, mm -hmm. especially Charles Coolidge. He's also going to be signing, um, he's going to be doing a signing as well, mm -hmm. and he's going to be participating in a battery drill. So there's a lot of super exciting things going on all weekend. And those bricks that she's talking about, if you haven't heard already, you can buy, I think it's for $50, right? No, <laughs> it's uh, actually $150 for a four by eight brick. So sorry, don't listen to my math, <laughs> listen to hers. But you can buy a brick and have the name of someone who served in the military and your family uh, on there, and that way they'll always have um, a legacy for their proud service of their country. Definitely, and those bricks are right out front of the Heritage Center, so every visitor that comes in, everyone that's walking towards the aquarium, so a lot of people um, see those bricks and their way to honor service. And I'll say one more thing too, I guess it still is like this in school. I know when I was in school, you kind of studied the same history a lot, mm -hmm. and somehow when it got to be more current and you were really interested because that was sort of your parents' time, you did. there wasn't time in the school year to learn it. It's so true. Right? <laughs> so being able to go to the Heritage Center, they have everything up to present day. Mm -hmm. So kids who might be interested in Desert Storm or what might have really happened at 9-11, that kind of thing, there are examples of that there for them to be able to continue that interest in learning. Definitely. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about Kyle Carpenter mm -hmm. at the Heritage Center. And, you know, he received his medal in 2009. Right. Um, and he's the youngest Medal of Honor recipient at 30 right can now. Can you be a member? At the, can you be a, have a membership yes. at the museum? Yes, you can definitely be a member at the museum, um, and you can buy your membership when you come in. Okay, so here's where you're going to want to go. It's the Charles H. Coolidge Medal of Honor Heritage Center, mm -hmm. uh, right there by the aquarium above Puckett's. So that you are right next to Puckett's, rather, mm -hmm. you can grab something to eat while you're enjoying really this gem of not just Chattanooga, but the country. People are getting wind of it and coming.